It's Jeannie. How are you? I hope you are well. Hi. Today's video was a lot of fun to make. You'll see why coming up. I show you some of my jewelry pieces, my rings, and tell you the stories behind them, and they're unbelievable. You'll see. Speaking of fun, this video is sponsored today by the folks at Trail Mix, and they make a game called Love and Pies. Um, Love and Pies follows the journey of this character named Amelia, as she is a single mom and renovating a family cafe. As she works to restore the cafe, she discovers all kinds of family secrets, grudges, and a long-forgotten romance. <laughs> and as you merge the items, you create points to be able to decorate and restore the cafe for Amelia. The graphics are fun and colorful, and the storyline is really interesting. It's the perfect me time break to escape to, and it's a very wholesome-ish world, the town of Appleton. So I love being in the matching mode and trying to find two things that are the same, merging them, creating something bigger, selling it, getting points, and then redecorating the cafe. Love and Pies is free to download, and I enjoy doing my little escapes with it, and um, I love the scenery, I love the challenge of finding two things to merge, and creating the decorating of the cafe, that's fun too, making little fun choices like that. I'm so appreciative to the people at Trail Mix Thank you so much for not only sponsoring my channel, but sharing this fun game with all of us. You can download Love and Pies now with the link in the description as well as the pinned comments. And again, folks at Trail Mix, thank you for sponsoring my channel. I truly appreciate you. I'm so excited. I hit the 80,000 mark yesterday, last night, and I have you all to thank for it. Not only the new people who are joining this channel, but those who have been around from the very beginning. I'm so grateful for you. And some of you are quiet and only will comment once in a while, and that's fine. But your support, your likes, your comments, your engagement, it means everything to me. It's just so lovely. If you ever want to listen to me without having to watch YouTube, of course, you can now go to Spotify and iTunes and other listening platforms and find my albums <laughs> there. Uh, I was telling one of our daughters that I was on Spotify and iTunes and all that. She said, what? So I hear her looking it up. <clears throat> then I hear my voice you know, in the background, because we're talking on the phone. And so she's like, oh, that's great, Mom. So the next day, she called me and said, oh, my God, Mom, I got in my car, and my car Bluetooth grabbed something from my phone Bluetooth. I don't know how that works, but I do know that things grab each other. And she said, I started driving and I started hearing your voice. And it was one of those calm, meditative, she's like, Mom, it was like you were haunting me. Your voice was suddenly all around me in my car. I thought that was pretty funny. <clears throat> um, 
So anyway, go figure. Today I am wearing my Judge Judy sweater and it has this little built-in collar and I swear, I, it's like with the little poof helmet hairdo, I look just like Judge Judy. <laughs> Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm not. So, today's video is a very special one. It's almost unbelievable. And you'll see why. Some of you who are historians will really love this. People like the French Whisperer and Secret Scholar. Amazing historians. Check out their channels. Well, I'm going to show you my jewelry collection specifically my rings and I have spent about four decades collecting these my husband and I we've traveled all over the world and every time we're somewhere new or interesting we search out some of these rings and I'll show you and tell you the story behind these rings and like I said, to those of you who are history buffs, um, I think you're going to be amazed. So, I, I keep these in a very special vault to keep them safe. It has been rumored that some of these have actually been stolen over the decades and then found and returned. And um, I'm really fortunate to have them now. I almost need an armed guard when I go and get them out of the vault. And you'll see why. They're extremely precious. So this video you can tune out to because there will be a lot of blah 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 and noises from the high quality metals and gold, platinum, silver, but never plastic, never. Or you can pay attention and revel in my amazing collection with me. Okay, ready? I'm going to zoom in so you can see each one. So here is the bulk of my collection. I know you can't see them close up yet, but I'll show you. And I'll tell you what makes these so collectible are the handcrafted, unique, one-of-a-kind crystal containers that each one is in. No two are alike. And that's what adds to the value of each ring. Now remember, in and of themselves, there some of these are priceless. Once you know the story. But these crystal capsules that are unique to each ring, I mean what drives the value up and it's not like you can just order these capsules in a box from China. So let's go through and start in. <laughs> and my little chicken hands <laughs> will show you these rings and tell you the story. 
people have asked me if I would sell some of these, and I've thought about putting them into an auction. Um, let me know what you think about that. Okay, let's start. All right. All right. I have a collection that came from the 1950s. I'll show you. They're all from the same collection. And these were brought back from one of the space shuttle trips to Mars, and I think it was in the early 50s. And the cool thing about these is they came back from Mars already made. So they really belong in a museum, but I was able to actually acquire them. Some of them, because Martians are very um, advanced, they've created this amazing technology where each ring has its own unique fitting system because Martians have different size fingers and like more so dramatic than ours. So look at this, so sophisticated. On the back, look at that, they open up. Look at that. You know how Mars is red? This is a piece of the planet. So I keep, and look at the metal, look at that precious metal. Just beautiful. And prior to the 1950s, they didn't know that Mars had such um, valuable metals like this on their planet. Look at that. And you can hear the quality of the metal. See that? I still have to get the hand-carved crystal containers made for these larger ones. So, okay, I'll put those aside. Now, there's, oh, this one. This is really special, and it, now, this is from our planet, but it also has the Martian technology of an open back. See that? And you know what this is? This whoops, is the death mask of Albert Einstein. Look. I think there were only about half a dozen of these made. So I know it's kind of creepy. It looks like a shrunken head and it looks like plastic but it's not. It's actually a very high quality resin. So they did, they made a death mask of his face and then shrunk it down and made a few rings. Look at that. Wow. So pretty valuable. Let me open up one of these capsules. Like I said, 
unique and no two are alike. They're all individually hand carved, hand cut crystal. They're all special, but some are mind-blowing. Okay, this one. Look at this. Again, look at the split-back technology. Oh. This is a bee, a honeybee. And you know that the bee is the symbol the official symbol of Gucci. And so this ring was designed by the first Gucci. And it's the only one like it. So that's really special. Now, <clears throat> oops, it must have come out of its uh, crystal container, but this one, your minds are going to be blown. Again, the open back technology. Look at that. That is so high tech. And we got that from the Martian rings. Now look at this. See that smile? This ring came from a couple centuries ago and it is purported to be the ring that was presented to Mona Lisa as a thank you gift from Leonardo da Vinci for posing in that one painting. Maybe you've seen it where she's got a little smile. Well. This. <laughs> this is the look he was going for. <laughs> so, he would tell her when she would stop smiling, please look at the ring. It's encrusted with gold dust. Okay, so pretty cool. In the crystal container. Okay. All right. Stephanie from Secret Scholar. You will appreciate this one because you are an amazing historian. them with your teeth to get the crystal to separate. So this, this is precious. Oh my gosh. This was worn by King Arthur. And this was his symbol. This is what was on his flags, on his shields, and on his ring. Now, this one, whoops, this one does not have the open back because this predates, King Arthur predates the 1950s um, by a couple decades. So, anyway, let's see, it doesn't fit on that finger. Ah, you know, King Arthur had very small fingers. Nobody knows that. But because of this ring, we now know that. And now you know. So, look at that. King Arthur. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Okay, let me put it back in it. It's very snug crystal.
Okay, now, you know, that was a very magical time, that whole king. If you haven't read The Mists of Avalon, oh my goodness, that is a fantastic book. Read it. Read it. They may even mention that ring in that book. It might have been presented to him from Morgane, Lady of the Lake. Okay, let's some of these that are not in containers. Crystal, hand-carved crystal. But these are said to be from the crown jewels from Queen Victoria's time. Look at those. Aren't those beautiful? One is a pearl, one is an emerald, and one is an opal. And now, Victorian age, look at this. It, it splits and adjusts in the back, kind of like the Martian ones. But this one overlaps. Do you see that? Whoops. You see my wedding band? overlaps a bit, but still pretty high-tech for Victorian times, okay? So they m plucked these out of some of the crowns and made rings out of them, and I was able to <sighs> purchase these, yeah, and add to my collection. Listen to the high quality. Gold and platinum. Just, just amazing. So, all right. <clears throat> oh, this is another one from the Martian 1950s space shuttle trip. Look at that. And that, look at that. That is just so beautiful. So, at night, when you look up at the sky and you see that red planet, if the sky is clear, you know that I have an amazing set of jewelry from that planet. It does exist. And don't let anybody tell you different. They came back with about a dozen, and I have about half a dozen. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And look at the metals. And again, that split back. That is so technologically advanced to have that split back in a ring. Okay. Now. Let's go, oh, okay, this one. This one is very small, and I'm gonna tell you why. Look at this. It is part of a heart, and there are some so tiny I can't even see it but it says something and it's got some runic inscriptions on it this comes from the Emerald Isle of Ireland and it was handed down to me to me from my grandmother off the boat Irish grandmother and she said that the wearer of this ring can call upon the fairies, elves, and leprechauns, even cat siths, look up that, to do your bidding. So that's why it's so small, is because it came from little leprechaun hands and 
my family, my the Irish side, actually go back to the leprechauns. My mom is about five foot. And her mom was about four ten, and her dad was probably five foot. He was a jockey, which they liked little men riding those horses, right? Well, my mom's mom's mom was about four foot five, and then her mother before her was about four feet, and they go on down, down, down until they were like barely a foot and a half, 18 inches tall. So, yes, we go back. Here's a special one. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's a big one. And what that is, is a serpent. It's a serpent. A green serpent. And this is actually one of the first renditions of the Loch Ness Monster. And the first person to see it, Alexander MacDonald. So now we're in the British Isles. Look at that. That serpent. That's Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. So this came from Alexander MacDonald, and he wore this until his death. So, okay. Now... Really special edition. Where is it? Where'd it go? Huh? Did I drop it? No. Oh, I must have left it. Shoot. This one, while it is not particularly pretty, this came from one of the lunar mar um, missions, the moon. Look at that. This is actual moon. Look at that. Moon. So, you know when you look through a telescope up at the sky and you see the moon and it's got little divots taken out? That's where they mined a lot of their jewelry. So, this came from the moon. I think it was in the 60s. So, kind of special. I wear this every full moon. Okay. All right. Now, some of these crystal... super fragile, so you have to handle them with care. So now, in some of you younger folks may not know this, but in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a crime spree throughout the United States, maybe other places too, but it was committed by this guy called the Hamburglar. And he would steal hamburgers from people who ordered them at McDonald's. And it was a huge crime wave. Well, anyway, he was caught by Officer Big Mac, and they made a ring to commemorate his great feat. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Whoops. Now, Somehow it's got the Martian technology of the split back open. So it's pretty advanced. And this is yellow gold. 
just sounds like plastic, but it's really not. It's gold. And the blue is actually crushed blue topaz. So, isn't that amazing? And look at the back. See that split back? Super high, sophisticated technology. So, not many of these are around. So, Officer Big Mac Ring. Okay. Oh, this one is so special. Holy moly. Okay. This is an Elgin diamond encrusted tells time anywhere. Look at this. Now, I hope you can see. Wait, no, maybe. As you move it, as you move it, the hands change to different places on the planet. So basically, this little ring watch tells time everywhere at once. <laughs> Find a ring like that. And Elgin was actually, is a company, a real company. Now, what's really precious about this ring is, you know, people think it comes in a Cracker Jacks box, but look at the technology. Again, look at that. That split open back. So, no. This doesn't just come in a Cracker Jacks box. That's just a rumor. That is not true. But look at this. So I can kind of ask it a question. What time is it in Morocco? And if I hold it just right, it's going to come up with a time in Morocco, or Singapore, or Munich, or Berlin, or San Francisco. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? So, yeah, I love that. Let me put the crystal back around it. Whoops. Yeah, see, no two crystal containers are alike. So, okay. All right, now, oops. Ah, this one. Now, I have to say, allegedly, because I don't want to be sued by Madonna, but allegedly this comes from her collection. Split back, split back, high quality, high technology. But it says, it says, I love boys. I love boys. So, yep, Madonna, the one who looked like Madonna from the 80s, that Madonna. So, okay, now, Martian, oh, here's another ring from the moon. See that divot? Darn focusing. These rings have more... technology than the camera. It's like, come on. There we go. Look at that. Another ring from the moon because you can tell how it's carved. And if you look at the moon through a telescope, of course, or even binoculars, you can see the divots taken out of the surface. So, now, There's a ring I did not show you. Where did it go? Gotta find it here. Where was it? It's pretty special. Um, where did it go? Where did it go? Hmm. Oh. Here it is. No, that's not it. Maybe it's 
Oh, here it is. Okay. This ring, and I know the detail is hard to see, but I'm going to try. And what I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the ship, uh, the steering wheel of a ship. Let's see if we can get this to focus. See that? Um, this ring was worn by Christopher Jones. And you historians can check this out. He was the captain on the Mayflower. On the Mayflower. So when they landed at Plymouth Rock, which is really like, I called it Plymouth Pebble. I thought it was big, like the Rock of Gibraltar. It's little. It's like this little rock down at the bottom. But anyway, that's where they landed. And this is his ring, Christopher Jones, captain of the Mayflower. So that's really special. Okay, I'm getting mixed up here. All these great rings. Okay, now... Now this is a very controversial ring, I'm just telling you. It's got the high technology split back and flexible gold. It's not plastic. See? Not plastic. And this allegedly, but I have it on very good source, that this came from Eve, of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, this was Eve's ring. And I'll show you, and you can tell me. It says, the devil made me do it. <sighs> Who else would have a ring? like that created for them, right? She bit into that apple because of that serpent who was the devil himself, and it changed the fate of humanity forever. So she had this really special ring made, and it shows the devil with his pitchfork, his evil pitchfork, and it says, the devil made me do it. So this is what she wore there on after when she left the Garden of Eden. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling the story. Okay. So that was most of them. The ones I didn't mention are just precious jewels. Um... Just very, very precious. And like I said, you know, these crystal capsules. This. Look at those. Look at the fine work. And like I said, it's not like you can just order these, you know, from China. Because if you did that, then they'd all be exactly alike. They'd be made out of plastic. Now, these are hand-cut crystal, and each one is unique and precious, individualized to fit the ring, and yeah, here's one I didn't show you, just a beautiful gem. I'm not sure what stone that is. Maybe you guys could tell me. You're good at this stuff. Whenever I have questions, you guys always have the answers. So, I have certificates of authenticity on many of these. I've got one for the King Arthur um, ring. So I've got a certificate of authenticity for the King Arthur ring, for the leprechaun elf magical ring, 
and the um, ring given to Mona Lisa from Leonardo da Vinci and the Mars ones from the 1950s space shuttle um, the space shuttle brought them back oh and this one from Officer Big Mac who captured the Hamburglar. I mean, that was a big deal. That was on headline news, you know, throughout the time in the 70s. So, there you have it, you know. Well, what do you think? Do you think I should put these up for auction? I mean, given the priceless nature of some of these, sitting on a fortune here. And sometimes I think I should donate some of the rare historical ones like the King Arthur ring. I mean, Secret Scholar, she is an amazing professor of history and other things like ancient languages and stuff like that. This would mean a lot to her. She could lecture on this stuff. So, yeah. And if you're into space, things from space, collections, I've got all those ones from the moon and from Mars. So, it's a, it's a collection I'm very proud of, and I've invested a lot of time and money into, so. I hope you enjoyed that, and some, maybe someday I'll show you my necklace collection, very rare. Very precious earrings as well. Tiaras. I do have tiaras. Truly. And bracelets. Things like that. So, I hope you enjoyed the noises, the talking, and maybe even the amazing history of these very highly collectible rings. Don't be jealous. I mean, you know, it, it's a lifetime of collecting. But somebody had to do it. I am going to sign off for now. Go make myself a lovely cup of... Let's see. I've already had my Earl Grey, so it's maybe some English breakfast. Or maybe my Yorkshire Gold. I love the Yorkshire Gold. Thank you all for being here, old and new, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay well, stay healthy, I bid you peace and love. Goodbye for now.